Okay, so today we're tackling forecasting, and uh, uh, not just your your typical weather forecast either. We're yeah. talking about predicting anything, yeah, from stock markets to uh, you know even pandemics. Exactly. And uh, you sent over some really interesting articles and research on this. Yes. So let's unpack this. Okay. What are the secrets to a killer forecast? What's the first thing we need to know? Well, I think. The best way to think about forecasting, okay, it's all about spotting patterns and trends in data, hmm. just like deciphering a code. Okay. But here's the thing. It's not enough to just look at the past. Right. You also need to understand the forces that are out there that are going to shape the future. So it's kind of like detective work then, right? Yeah. Gathering clues from the past to solve a case in the future. Exactly. And just like detectives have their own you know, their go-to techniques, mm -hmm. forecasters use different models, each with their own strengths. Thank you for tuning in to Quantopian's Quant Radio, your AI-driven podcast exploring everything related to quantitative finance. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on future releases. For more quant-focused content, join us at community.quantopian.com. There you can explore a wealth of resources, connect with fellow quants, engage in insightful discussions, and enhance your skills through our extensive range of online courses. Quant Radio is intended to help people develop their knowledge and skills in quant finance. This podcast is not intended to provide investment advice. And now, back to the episode. Right. You mentioned a couple of these models, uh, yeah. ARMA and exponential smoothing. Right. Now, those sound a little intimidating. Sure. Can you break those down for us a little bit? Yeah. So imagine ARIMA as kind of a time traveling historian. OK. It digs into data that unfolds over time. OK. Like stock prices or economic indicators to find repeating patterns. Mm. So think of a stock that maybe peaks consistently in the summer and dips in the winter. OK. ARIMA picks up on those cycles and helps you predict if that pattern is likely to continue. So if I wanted to like take a stab at next year's stock market trends, hmm. Arima might be the way to go. Exactly. It's great for anything with a really strong historical pattern. Okay. Now, exponential smoothing is more like a trend spotter, uh -huh. but with a really flexible attitude. Okay. It's ideal for situations where there's a clear trend, but things could shift unexpectedly. I see. So like if I'm launching a brand new product, Right. I expect the demand to be really high when it first hits the market, yeah. but then maybe it'll level off or even decline. Exactly. That's a perfect example. Uh -huh. Exponential smoothing would help you capture that initial surge, but also adjust to changes in demand as you go. Gotcha. Giving you a much more realistic picture. This is making me think that maybe the best approach is to kind of use a mix of these models. Yeah. Like getting a second opinion. Absolutely. The real magic happens when you combine different forecasting methods. Mm -hmm. It's like assembling a team of experts with diverse skills. Okay. You get a much more comprehensive and accurate prediction that way. So the key takeaway here is that no single model has all the answers. Right. It's about choosing the right combination for the job. Exactly. But I'm guessing even the best models in the world are useless without good data. Absolutely. So should we, should we dive into that next? Let's do it. Okay. Data is the lifeblood of any forecast. And it's not always about quantity. Okay. Sometimes just a few key pieces of information are more valuable than a mountain of irrelevant information. So it's like you almost have to be a little choosy with the data, right? Exactly. You don't need every single scrap of data you can find. Right. It's really about identifying those key pieces of information that are most relevant to the specific prediction you're making. Okay. Like, um, you know, let's say you're trying to forecast sales for umbrellas. Okay. Knowing the average rainfall over past decade is helpful. Sure. But understanding current weather patterns and consumer sentiment towards, you know, the latest umbrella trends is probably going to be even more crucial. It's almost like, uh, you know, when you're trying to bake a cake. Yeah. You can't just like throw in a bunch of random ingredients and expect it to turn out great. Right. You need the right ingredients and the right amounts. Yeah. Too much flour and you've got a brick. Exactly. It's about finding those data points that are most likely to influence the outcome. Okay, so so how do you actually go about doing that? Right. How do you sift through all that information and find those key ingredients for your forecast? That's where things get really interesting, and it's where that human element comes into play. You know, we can't just feed a bunch of data into a machine and expect to get these perfect predictions. Mm. We have to use our judgment and our experience 
to really understand the context. Okay. Identify potential biases in the data and interpret the results. That makes sense because data can tell us what's happened in the past. Sure. But it takes a little bit of human insight, I think, to really understand why it happened and then what might happen next. Precisely. And, you know, that leads us to a really crucial aspect of forecasting. Okay. And that's that human element. Okay. It's not just about the numbers. Right. It's about understanding the story behind those numbers. So we've talked about the models, the data, yeah. all that good stuff. Yeah. But it sounds like there's a real art to forecasting, too. Absolutely. This human element you're talking about. Yeah. How does that play into making accurate predictions? It boils down to interpretation and judgment. You yeah. know, okay. the data gives us the pieces of a puzzle, mm. but it's human expertise that helps us actually put those pieces together yes. and see the bigger picture. Right. We have to look at the data and ask ourselves, okay, what is this really telling us? Mm. Are there other factors at play that the models might be missing? So you're saying even with all the fancy algorithms and data in the world, yeah. there's still a need for good old fashioned human intuition. Absolutely. I mean, think about it like this. Okay. You're trying to forecast the success of a new movie that's coming out. Okay. You can analyze past box office numbers, mm -hmm. look at the social media buzz, even factor in star power. Yeah. But what about those things that are harder to quantify? Right, like what? The plot of the movie, the director's vision, how the audience connects with it on an emotional level. Yeah. Those are things that are really tough to capture with just data alone. Right. And that's where that human element comes in. It's like trusting your gut. Exactly. You might not be able to explain it. Yeah. But you get a feeling about something based on your experience. Right. And combining that intuition yeah. with those data driven insights. Yeah. That's really what leads to the most accurate forecasts. So it's not about trying to predict the future with like 100 percent certainty. That we're, right. We're... It's more about understanding the possibilities. OK. And making the most informed decisions that you can. So if we can't predict the future perfectly. Yeah. Then what's the point of all this? What's the real value in forecasting anyway? Forecasting is all about being prepared. You know, okay. it helps us make better decisions to navigate the uncertainty of the future. So it's not about getting rid of uncertainty. Yeah. It's about learning to deal with it. Exactly. Embrace the uncertainty. Use forecasting as a tool. Mm -hmm. And remember that flexibility is key. This has been a fascinating deep dive. We've learned about the science of forecasting, yeah. but also the art of it as well. Absolutely. And for you listening, we hope this deep dive has given you a new appreciation for the power of forecasting. And maybe even inspired you to make some predictions of your own. The future is never set in stone. But with the right tools and a healthy dose of curiosity, we can all become better navigators of the unknown.